thanks for tuning in. I'm Lauren and this is the first part of my new top tips sewing series where I'm starting right at the very beginning and showing you all you need to know to be able to sew with a sewing machine working up to being able to sew your own clothes. And I know a lot of my followers will already probably be past the stage of setting up their sewing machine but I just wanted to cover all the basis and then kind of slowly build up over time. So if you are just starting out to sew, then this is a really good place to start. So the machine that I'm gonna be showing you on in this video is the Brother Innovis F420. And this is the sewing machine that we have in our sewing workshop, where we sew in studio, where we teach all of our workshops. And it is more of a mid-range sewing machine, so it's a bit fancier than maybe some of the more basic ones that you'd have. Um, but it's still got all of those classic sewing machine landmarks that I'm gonna be able to take you on a tour around. Um, so even if you don't have this model of machine, then hopefully the video will still be useful for you. So first of all, I want to cover the main landmarks that you need to find on your machine if you're gonna thread it up. And as I said before, it might be in a slightly different place if you're using a different machine at home, but the ones I'm gonna give you a list of will be on every machine. So first of all, you need to know where the spool pin is, and that is what the thread goes on to. The next one is the bobbin stand, and that is where the empty bobbin goes on before you actually wind the bobbin. Along the top of the machine, there will be a tension disc. So when you are putting thread onto the bobbin, the thread has got to be caught underneath this tension disc so that the bobbin gets wound at tension. And then there'll be some thread guides that help you to thread the machine and the needle. And on this machine, you can see that there's lines and arrows and they're kind of numbered. So that's how you know what order to take the thread in and where to hook it all round. And then there will be a bobbin housing. So this can either be a top loading or a front loading bobbin on this machine we've got a top loading bobbin, so the bobbin just dro drops straight in at the top. The front front loading one is when you actually like take the front of the machine off and there's like a little bit that you pull down and you put the bobbin in there. So it's either gonna to be top or, or front. And then the last main one that I wanted to point out at this stage is the hand wheel that's at the side of the machine. And just remember to always turn that hand wheel towards you. That's what's gonna lower the needle up and down. The next stage is winding the bobbin. So you need to get thread from the spool onto the bobbin because in order for the machine to make stitches, it has to have a thread in the top and the bottom. So you place the spool of thread onto the spool pin and then you guide the thread around these lines and arrows that you can see here and you've got to make sure that it catches underneath the tension disc. You actually hear a really light clicking noise on this machine when it's when it's properly caught and it's really important that it's under there. When you pull on the thread it's almost like you can feel a little bit of resistance. Then start to wind the thread around the empty bobbin. I usually just do this manually and wind it around maybe four or five times and then there's a little cutter to trim the excess off here. If your machine machine doesn't have that you might need to cut it with scissors or put the thread through the little hole that's in the top of the bobbin just to make sure it catches on and then you just have to click the whole bobbin mechanism over to the right hand side that's what that arrow there is and then just put your foot on the pedal and it will wind your bobbin for you and you'll know that it's definitely caught under that tension disc because you'll see the thread just kind of go up and down and evenly distribute on the bobbin. The next part is threading the top of the machine, the top thread. So always make sure that the needle is at the highest position when you thread your machine. So on this sewing machine, there's an actual button that will do that for you. But if you don't have that, you can use the hand wheel. Remember, always turn it towards you until the needle is at the highest position. Um, then follow the lines and arrows. So on this machine, you can just follow these, these lines and arrows here up and down catching it in all the guides and then just don't forget the one that is at the top of the needle so on this machine it's labeled as number six it can be quite hard to see and you've got to sort of tug it over to the left a little bit to make sure it clicks in then you're either going to be threading the needle manually or if your machine has a needle threader then you can use that too so this one has a needle threader which is really good you just have to catch it onto this mechanism at the side pull the lever down and then the needle's threaded which is great then the next part is threading the bobbin thread. So as I mentioned before, on this machine, it's a top loading bobbin. So the bobbin is just gonna drop down into this little casing here. 
when you come to put the bobbin into that bit, make sure that the thread comes off the left hand side of it so that it looks like a letter P and then just drop it in. Then you can just follow the thread around these guides so there's, you can see there's more arrows here and then there's another little cutter that just cuts the excess off. So on this machine you can actually then just start stitching and the machine will automatically draw the bobbin thread up to the top. But if your machine doesn't have that, you'll need to do it manually. So you can still do it manually in this machine. All you have to do is just hold the top thread taut. And then as you're turning the hand wheel towards you, you turn it until the needle goes all the way down and then all the way back up again. And then just keep a bit of tension on that top thread. And once the needle's done that full cycle of up and down, you can just pull on the thread and then the bobbin thread just gets drawn up to the top of the machine, you'll sort of see a little loop appear. So then you just pull that through and then you've got your, your bobbin thread out, then you're ready to start sewing. So the little bit of the machine that the fabric sits under is called the foot. That is the foot, not the bit that you actually put your physical foot on, that's the pedal. Um, and for most simple projects, you're just gonna be using the standard foot. So you can see that this one has got a little slit in it that the thread passes through. So it means that when you come to sew, the tails are always right at the back of the machine. On this particular machine, the starting position or the kind of master position of the needle is to the left hand side of the foot. And when that when the needle is in that position, that's what makes all of these measurement guides here correct. So you can position the needle in the middle of the foot if you want, but just bear in mind it will knock out all of those guides there and you can use them to your advantage when you come to sew. The next thing is the feed dogs and the machine speed. So the feed dogs are the little spiky grips that are under the foot of the machine. So I'll take the foot off just so you can see them properly. And when you sew, these little feed dogs, they sort of move up and down and they help to grip your fabric and feed it through the machine. So it's the speed at which these dog feed dogs turn that determines how quickly your machine sews. So when you put your foot on the pedal of the machine, the feed dogs go around faster and then that's what makes your fabric go through the machine and stitch faster. You can also control that the speed of that on this machine by using the speed control. So this sort of sets a speed limit on the machine. So if it's a lower setting, it doesn't matter how hard you press that pedal, it will only go a certain speed. Whereas if it's at its fastest setting, it just makes the pedal more sensitive. So if you want it to go slow, just press the pedal a little bit. If you want it to go fast, put your foot down. So once you've got all of that set up, then it is time to start sewing, the exciting bit. So just have a little practice on a scrap when you start. Get used to where your hands wanna be, get used to the speed, get used to just coordinating putting your foot in a pedal and then fabric actually going through the machine. So I would always suggest to keep your hands quite relaxed and light as you sew. They should always be more at the front of the machine and I usually keep my left hand slightly to the side, my front, my right hand is at the front and you're never pushing or pulling your fabric through the machine. You just let the fabric let the machine pull the fabric through and your hands are literally just there to steer. So it's good to just practice going round, going round curves. You could draw a line on a fabric and try to follow it. You can practice turning the corner as well. So you can just stop sewing, make sure that the needle is in the fabric, lift the presser foot up, turn the fabric round and then lower the presser foot down again. So just have a little play. Once you've got it threaded up, you just need to start sewing and you'll quickly get an idea of the feel of the machine. So I hope you found that useful. It's giving you a bit of confidence to just get started and we'll be back again soon with my second installment of this new series and I'm just going to be covering basic seams and seam finishes as well. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on that video and don't forget get to give it a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, thanks for watching guys i'll see you soon bye